Hey guys, welcome back to All Read What She's Reading. I'm Kennedy. I'm Reggie. And I'm Michaela. And today's episode is the first of hopefully more to come. It's the 2023 IRWSR Book Awards. Yeah! <laughs> So I feel today like we need like some award show, music. Yeah, <laughs> like an audience clap. So you guys submitted some really awesome awards for us to give. So we're each going to give a book for each award. But first, before we do that, we are going to unveil the book that you guys chose. I have no idea what the result for no the best book club book that we chose. Do you guys have any? Well, maybe let's share ours first. Oh, oh, like, like which book we thought yeah. was like Who, the best? Like our personal favorite from our book club this year. I wasn't prepared for this question, Kennedy. I'm going to have to say Fourth Wing. And I feel like that's kind of basic, but like... I think that was my favorite pick that we did. Can I be honest with you guys, though? Here's... I kind of have a bitter taste in my mouth about Fourth Wing since I read Iron Flame. Mm. No, I feel that too. I'm like, was Fourth Wing to, like, as remind good? myself how i felt reading that book and then when i was done reading it true i don't remember all the books we did i need to go look real quick (laughs) here look i'll show you i have them right here okay hmm i thought i knew what you were gonna say michaela me too oh the thing is i i want to say like i want to say powerless i do but we all had like the same thoughts on it and so i don't know if it was like my favorite because i feel like maybe even local woman missing or the only one left might be my favorite because we had so much to discuss Ooh, that's a good point if that makes sense i don't know or and there was a lot to discuss about fourth thing too i'm not saying those are my favorite books that we read but there was but, just yeah, a lot to discuss yeah. with those books Kennedy, you go first. I would say fourth wing, but I do feel like I have a bitter taste in my mouth ever since reading Iron Flame. So I'm going to say powerless because I just had so much fun reading that book. It was so much fun. Mine is fourth wing and powerless. (laughs) I accept your answer. Okay. (laughs) Are we ready to see what everybody else thinks? I think I know what people picked but i think i yeah in third place we have divine rivals tell us the percentage too with 15 percent. 15 wow Mm. okay i want to see if you guys can guess number two i'm gonna guess oh i just got it mixed up because the color dots i'm gonna guess the nightingale i'm gonna guess powerless powerless with 25 percent with the number one being fourth Fourth wing wing. 42.3 42 the least favorite do you guys know what the least favorite was local woman missing malibu rising oh okay okay yeah okay yeah that makes sense and then followed by that one's probably actually my least favorite it doesn't surprise me (laughs) cool so wait it was number three was what number three nope. was um divine rivals divine, divine rivals Life. powerless and fourth wing so all fantasy books we know you guys like those so we will keep them going um and there's also a section we put on here with books you guys are hoping to see as book club books in 2024 a lot of these are fantasy fantasy so, they're just so fun to talk about mm-hmm. and it's so fun to get dms from you guys that are like thanks for converting me to fantasy it's like a good feeling. It is the like, best We feel feeling. like proud mothers. <laughs> proud mothers. Mother hens over here. All of our fantasy. We love fantasy. Okay. All right. So let's get into our category, shall we? Are you going to say them all? Yeah. Oh, should we say them all? I don't know. I think we just take one, one we'll at a time. We'll take one at a time. One okay. at a time. Our first category is smuttiest slash spiciest book. Reggie. What award did you get? What book did you give that award to? I had a hard time with this one because I've read books, a few books that like the plot was pretty much just spice. (laughs) 
and then i've also read books where like the plot isn't spice but like it was a lot of the plot if that makes sense mm-hmm. so i felt like i had to give the award to the book that was solely like the plot was spice because i was having such a hard time coming up with out of the books that had more to the plot if that does that make sense mm-hmm. you know anyways so i it, it's so hard i'm like trying to remember <laughs> these scenes from all these different books i'm probably gonna have to say a tessa bailey book Mm. it happened one summer i could see that i could see it because uh, did i love it no uh but (laughs) i just feel like it was every single chapter there was something new and (laughs) it really um really opened my (laughs) my eyes Listen, I tried to listen to Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey, and it was decently spicy. I couldn't finish it. So, I don't I don't know if I'll ever read another Tessa Bailey book. Oh, I, I really love her TikToks, and I'm sure, like, I really love her. I just am not someone who reads for spice, and so, to me, I had to give that award to It Happened One Summer by, by her, so. Valid. Michaela? Um, oh, I'm going next. Mm-hmm uh it's <clears throat> twisted games it's in the twisted love series is this one you played part of the audiobook for us yep <laughs> yep see I, did, I didn't love it and um it was too much for me <laughs> and i have not continued the series since there's still two more books and i just it's, it's not for me are those it's, ones about the billionaires no, no that's uh, i forgot this one the billionaire one is like the disney owning yeah. the disney oh yeah 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 some people just <laughs> from the little taste yeah you gave us in the car that one day <laughs> it was something listening to spicy books is the worst is really yeah. a, a different experience mm-hmm. it truly i is. can't i can't i don't know how the narrators don't laugh at themselves because sometimes i mean applaud you but i just could not say those words without laughing out loud and giggling because i am a child (laughs) 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 anyways yeah listening i feel uncomfortable i don't know why it's because the people at the stoplight can hear what you're listening (laughs) to that's why (laughs) i turn it down so do i (laughs) okay mine i actually listened to as well it's icebreaker by hannah baker and oh no hannah grace sorry yeah hannah so grace wrong. yeah if you have listened to the book <laughs> you know about the car scene mm. and that just really i was in my car while listening to the car scene it just really threw me for a loop and it ruined i think it's cruel summer no anyways oh, in, taylor swift song? in the in the scene there's a taylor swift song playing in the background and it kind of ruined the song for me so that one's something else for sure and parents if you're listening to this i do not buy your child icebreaker no the amount of people i saw probably a 12 year old pick up icebreaker in barnes and noble with her mom and i i almost walked up to them and said hey maybe don't buy this for your 12 year old just because it's a cute cartoon cover does not mean you should buy it for your child that is, yeah because that one is so spicy it is pretty spicy yeah, it's pretty spicy i love that when we first started the podcast a lot of people were saying we should have that be one of our book club books do you remember that i mean it was a cute story like i liked it there's, there's a lot of spice stassi yeah okay our next category is not worth the hype or your most disappointing read of the year Michaela, you want to go first? Yeah. I can go first. People might throw hands with me. I have two, actually. So I'm going to say them. A Curse of True Love. Ooh. By, what's her name? Stephanie Garber. Mm -hmm. And Iron Flame. By Rebecca. Double whammy there. Rebecca Yaros. Yaros. And it's not that I didn't like those books. The thing is, I I did, but they were by far the most disappointing. Just because of like how overhyped 
yeah yeah so and it's not that i don't like them they were just really uh, they were just disappointing to me i agree with both of them so yeah i agree reggie i am going to have to say iron flame just because i mean we've talked about this on our iron flame episode but there were just a lot of elements to iron flame that there were just some things that were lacking um i still like loved the book and i still love rebecca yaros and i love the whole world and story of of <laughs> why can't i think of what it's called yeah the empyrean the empyrean um however i was just maybe expecting a little bit more and the ending was so great like i really loved the way things ended in that book but everything kind of leading up to that was just kind of yeah a little disappointing because of how confused i was and i think i was just expecting a little more from the hype of you know you have that high after finishing fourth wing and so you kind of are expecting the next book to maybe be a little better or at that same level and just wasn't but i still loved it nonetheless so amen kennedy i'm gonna choose something different because i i agree with both of theirs they were they were disappointing but i'm gonna go with none of this is true by lisa jewel okay 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 Okay. I recently read this probably a few weeks ago and it was so overhyped for me. If you read this book, it's very similar to a very popular thriller that most everybody has read. It, yeah, it just wasn't anything super special and everybody was saying how good of a thriller it was. It was the best thriller they've ever read. There was like no plot twist. It just was like cut and dry, a little bit boring. Just wasn't it for me. I think I rated it three stars and it just wasn't, I was entertained, but it wasn't very good. It just wasn't, didn't give me what a thriller needed to give me, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Next, next category. Book shed most tear. The, <laughs> the book that made us cry the most. I'll go first. You go first. <laughs> I'm not saying this is a good book. Okay. The book is A Dog's Purpose. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this before, but I was Mark Pauling these guys as I was reading this book and I was not okay. I had snot dripping down my face. I had to blow my nose every 30 seconds. When I finished the book, I had a headache from how much I had been crying. Not the best book, but just where I'm at in my life with an elderly dog, it really just hits different. So that's the book that made me cry the most. Let's go, Reggie. Right. Um, I will tell you that I was picking, trying to pick between two books, but when I thought about which one I cried, it was a. It was, I had. To, I feel like I had to pick between Kingdom of Ash and The Nightingale, and I chose The Nightingale. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I just think that I I think one I was a little more hormonal while reading the Nightingale and I don't know it just like kind of got me in the heart a little more than I feel like I maybe cried had more like teary moments during Kingdom of Ash but like I more like sobbed while reading the Nightingale if that makes sense yeah that makes sense so yeah were you surprised by that you pulled yeah I don't know why I mean, not really. I'm not that surprised. I think I'm surprised that you were debating, like, Kingdom of Ash was in there as one well, of the I mean, as that the book. is, like, oh, and what, almost 900-page book? There were a lot of a lot of opportunities for tears in that one. So Touche. Touche. Yeah. Mine's Kingdom of Ash. And it was even your second time reading it. Mm-hmm. Probably hits even more the second time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's... I mean, like Reggie said, it is 900 pages and it, there's a lot of moments where it invokes those feelings. So it's a longer book than The Nightingale and a lot of other books, but I think that's the one I cried in 
the most throughout the entire dur- duration. But also, it's the last book in an entire series, so you've been connected to these characters for so long mm-hmm. that it's bound to happen when you're finishing a series up. Gosh dang, I love that book. Yeah, me too. Gosh dang. <laughs> dang yeah, it. I was just surprised that it was in there. Really? I don't know why. I just I was just surprised that it was an I mean, option. Was I? I was not impressed by the. Well, I wouldn't say I wasn't impressed, but. I mean, we know how I feel about the ending, but, like, I still, like, that was, like, almost a five-star read for me. Like, I really, really did love that book, so. Love it. All right. Next one. Best book cover. Do you have one, Michaela? I'm going to start with you. I don't. Skip me. Okay, skipping Michaela. Reggie. You know, at first, I was like, oh, I think it's fourth wing, because it is a very cool cover. But the more I keep looking at these two other covers, the more I'm like, I think these are the coolest ones. Um, If I had to pick between Mm, House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath, I think I'm going to go with... What the heck? My Goodreads is telling me that I didn't read House of Sky and Breath. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm going to probably go with House of Sky and Breath. Okay. Michaela, do you have one? I guess I do have one. And it might not be like the prettiest, but I appreciate it a lot. And mine is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Ooh. Okay. I thought of that one. It's very beautiful. It's just beautiful. It's symbolic and it's also very simple. And it's just it's just a beautiful cover, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Okay. I'm going the exact opposite direction because mine are not simple at all. <laughs> My favorite covers of the year are the Magnolia Parks book series, and I'm gonna tell you why. I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Not only do they just think they look really cool on my shelf, but after you read the books, if you go back and look at the covers front and back, there's so much symbolism in the book covers. It's insane. I'm not going to go into too much detail because if you haven't read the books, I don't want to spoil anything. But since you guys have read one and two, go back and look at the covers because everything on them has to do with the story. Yeah, they are my favorite book covers. Easy. And you're talking about the new covers or not the new not covers. The f- Sorry, the okay. old covers, not okay. the new yeah, covers. Yeah, I'm talking about the indie covers. But I can't lie, the new Magnolia Parks book cover I don't really love. So. I like them. <laughs> you like it? No, I meant like the new book. Oh, the new, the new yeah, Magnolia the new Parks book. one. Yeah, I don't know if I love it, but maybe I'll love it after I read it because I'll understand what's on the cover. But yeah, they're my favorite. Our next book category is Wish I Would Have Skipped It. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go first. Mine is tender as the flesh. Mm. I could have gone my whole life without reading any part of that book. I'm so sorry, Kennedy. It was... She took one for the team. It was jarring. (laughs) Made me nauseous. I couldn't finish it. Fair. Yep. That's all I have to say. I can understand why. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to go? You want me me to go? Yeah. um, This is one... It's not like it really had much of an impact on me at all, but that's probably why I wish I would have skipped it. I just, I really can't read a cheesy young adult high school romance, and I don't know why <laughs> this book was the first book that came to my mind, so I was like, I'm just going to go with my gut. Um, you've reached Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> Is that not what you were expecting? <laughs> not what I was know. expecting. <laughs> so funny. I'm like, I think it's going Probably because I told you to read it. <laughs> <laughs> actually i've not read that one and i have you skipped it, it. it was yeah, just you can very skip. like i don't know why but like scrolling through all the books that i have read that's, that's like the not one what that i had... thought was gonna come out of your mouth reggie <laughs> what did you think i was gonna say i don't know but not that i don't know there was like one other book i thought of but like it had some good quotes in it so i was like yeah <laughs> I guess I'm maybe glad I heard late, listened to those quotes on the audiobook. But yeah, You've Reached Sam by Dustin Th- Teo. I don't know. It just was uh, very cheesy and predictable. And 
didn't have much of an impact on me at all so hey i respect it yeah Mm -hmm. i respect it um Mm -hmm. oh no Mm -hmm. oh no just kidding um i feel like people are gonna come for me that's fine (laughs) i'm doing kingdom of the feared which is Kingdom of the Wicked series. Uh, it could be that I just listened to them, but the plot was so all over the place. I had no idea what was going on. And I actually didn't finish the last book because I could give two rips about how it ended. So, I mean, I did technically skip it. I actually, I think I got 63% of the way through. And, you know, I said, I don't know what's going on. So I stopped <laughs> reading it. <laughs> and that's all. I maybe wish I would have skipped the entire series. But I can't go back, so. No, you can't. Mm. You can just say that you wish you wouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. The category everyone's been waiting for. Best book boyfriend. This is Reggie, so hard. You're up first. I am going to go with the most basic answer. Mm, wait. Now I'm debating because I'm thinking of someone else. <laughs> share both. Let's just share both. It's really a toss up between um, that one guy from Akatar. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Don't want to spoil for anybody. Or Zayden. Daddy Zayden. Daddy Zayden. Um, I'm kind of leaning more towards Zayden, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. If I had to say final answer, maybe I'd probably say. Maybe I'd say Zayden. Okay. Michaela? Oh, it's so hard. If I could date them all, I would. <laughs> wouldn't we all they would all be my boyfriends Mm -hmm. um this is just one that came to mind because he made me giggle the most i i there's there's some that are still the top maybe husband material oh but this is boyfriend you know Oh, okay Mm, okay i see what you're saying kai from powerless Mm. yeah same i put very good answer i put kai or dorian Ooh, dorian daddy dorian mm-hmm. there's just something about him i don't know what it is something something about him that just my biggest regret of 2023 is that i didn't i passed him on smash <laughs> <laughs> i feel like we need to do another episode in like a few months or something we should yeah we probably that's what the, we should i feel like those are my favorite you want to know what we should add on here our favorite episode like that oh, we, oh, that we, we did. could yeah we'll add we that at the very end then. okay yeah, we'll add that at the end our favorite episode all all of them are so good like michaela said you can't it's like pokemon gotta catch them all <laughs> <laughs> you know we do we need to catch them all okay best audiobook michaela Wait, who was yours i said kai or dorian oh okay yeah. sorry yeah it's the shadow Fancy hands for me okay <laughs> even though he's only six one just kidding six that's plenty tall okay Best audio book. It is plenty. T- um, hmm, I just put anything by Abby Jimenez. Yeah. I just have really enjoyed listening to her books. I've only physically read one of hers and I still really liked it. But any any of the Abby Jimenez, I really enjoyed. Um, and those are the ones that have stuck out to me the most. And those are probably some of the highest rated um audiobooks that i've listened to so same and like her audiobooks stick with me like i can remember most of the plot usually with audiobooks i listen to them and then i rate them and kind of forget about them yeah but hers i can remember most of the plot yeah i love abby jimenez i love it love her doesn't she have a new book coming out next year yeah the summer one yeah okay ready um i'm gonna say i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy that's a good Mm -hmm. one that's a good one i just feel like it's very 
it's a very neat experience to listen to a book that is narrated by the author true Mm. uh and when it's like their own like their life story uh i just felt like i felt had anyone else read it i probably wouldn't have loved that book as much as i did um i just feel like it just really it just felt very real to hear her telling the story especially when she would speak on behalf of other people in her book and um you could like you know she was like trying not to get emotional when she was like she had to like not get emotional while she read it but you could just tell like it was still very emotional to listen to so i love you jeanette that's a good one you've listened to that too haven't you Mm -hmm. okay mine okay i have two one is because i'm currently listening to it and i have a feeling it might be my favorite audiobook for this year and one that i've already listened to okay my first one is out on a limb by hannah bonham young i believe yeah is that who it's by there was just something about that book it i don't know if i've talked about it on the podcast yet have i i don't um, think i, I don't have. Know if you I have i told i was talking to these guys about it on marco polo but uh it this isn't a spoiler it has an accidental pregnancy trope and i thought i would hate that but the way that the book was the story was told i just really loved it and the guy in that book if you go read my review he is the definition of if he wanted to he would he is everything so if you haven't read or listened to that i really enjoyed listening to it i rated it pretty highly for it being an audiobook the other one that i'm currently listening to is paris the memoir now let me preface this by saying i grew up in the 90s watching paris hilton watching the simple life my sister was obsessed with paris hilton and nicole ritchie and so it's kind of nostalgic to listen to she narrates her audiobook as well so it's kind of nostalgic to just hear her tell her story and her story is absolutely heartbreaking it's really sad um i'm only about halfway through but i've cried probably four or five times already just because there's something different about listening to someone tell their own story and I'm really enjoying it so far. So I have a feeling that might be my favorite audiobook for the year. So I just had to throw it in there. Love it. Okay. Next. Our biggest surprise of 2023. Michaela. I think mine is, and when we say biggest surprise, it means the book that surprised us the most on us, like, loving it as much as we did Mm -hmm. i think my biggest surprise was divine rivals Ooh, okay i didn't think i would love as much as i do Mm -hmm. so yeah that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one me Mm -hmm. um there were a lot of books that surprised me this year it was really hard to pick just one but I'm going to go with Daisy Jones and the Six. If you guys have read this book, you know what I'm talking about. It's a very different format to read. Um, It's basically kind of like a, not a screenplay. It's like narrated like a documentary because they're making a documentary. If you've seen the TV show, you get it too. It's like, it would be like Billy and it would like colon and then it would say his line, what he said. And then there weren't like paragraphs unless it was someone's spoken dialogue. So it's spoken dialogue throughout the whole thing and these people are telling the story and then it would be like, Billy, this. It wouldn't be like, Daisy said, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how to explain it, but I had a really hard time with it, like the first few chapters and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like this book. Um, I had had someone read it recently that I knew and um, they were saying, (laughs) they were saying how like boring it was and they're like it's just about a band it's nothing that deep and then by the end of it I was like a sobbing blubbery mess and I also just from watching the tv show I know there's a lot of things they changed in the tv show that I wasn't super happy with but it was so fun to watch the tv show after the fact and I just feel like for some reason that book just has a very special place in my heart and it's just really cool to like have started the book and even like a few chapters in just be like oh i don't know if i'm gonna like this and then have it be one of my favorite books so i love that book too i think the tv show made me love it more for some weird Mm -hmm. reason i don't know why okay mine 
is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Mm. Okay. I didn't know that this was a very well-known book when I read it. I had heard nothing about it, never seen it on TikTok. Nothing. But when we did our worth the hype, not worth the hype episode, I used Dark Matter as not hyped enough. And someone came at us and said, Dark Matter is such a hyped book. Everybody knows about it. I did not. So when I got it on my Libby app, the only reason I started to read it was because it was available instantly. And I read it on my Libby app and I loved it so much. It was so good. It was unlike anything I had ever read. It was my first true sci-fi book and it was so much fun. I've since read other books by Blake Crouch and I've come to find out I'm not really smart enough to read his books because they're, he's very intelligent and I just don't think I'm smart enough. Dark Matter is the one book that I absolutely loved by him, but it just, it's just unlike anything you could, I have ever read and since read. So surprised me. And I'll get it. everybody to read it. Reggie, you have to read it. I know. It's it's on my list. Nothing makes me happier than when I see people on Goodreads say that they're reading it. But then it also makes me nervous because if they hate it, Kennedy, I take it personally. Kennedy thought I was going to hate it. It's a pleasant surprise. I'm pleasantly surprised that you gave it four stars. Yeah. I thought it was good. Okay. You're validating me. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Best unexpected plot twist. Michaela, me first. <laughs> I have two. Okay. I feel like this one's obvious. It's Iron Flame. Yep. And then my other one, which I don't think you guys would think I would think this but um it's for me it's house of blood and earth and blood blood and earth earth and blood blood yeah and i mean i can't say why reggie you guys are gonna be like it's really dumb that you didn't see this coming because i think you guys (laughs) really guessed this one but i think it's just because i was so not i wasn't new into reading but i was just new to oh i know what she's gonna say and i think that's why this is one of my favorite books of all time because i um it just had such an impact on me <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. um and i will not say why this one was it was what it is but that'd be a court of mist and fury yeah <laughs> and i think it's just because it wasn't one of those things where it was like oh plot twist and then let's move on it was like plot twist let's let you sit in this for a whole chapter two chapters and cry your eyes out type of thing so i just feel like the connecting that piece the dots and all that was just like really fun yeah yeah sjm knows how to like uh foreshadow and then come back to it Mm -hmm. yeah so i'm so nervous for crescent city three yeah I'm going to go with, I have two as well. One being Kingdom of Ash. There's a certain part that I never would have seen coming and it wrecked my soul. But I guess you can kind of see it coming. Anyways, Kingdom of Ash. And then the other one I'm going to say is the ending of Divine Rivals. Only for the fact that like, I would have never really seen me hysterically sobbing at the end of that book, but I did. And I just never would have seen it coming. Oh, Is there? Man, there's been so many good books we've read this year. I'm like, so this many. one, I want to go back. <laughs> this category was really hard for me because there's so many books that I feel like I'd be like, what? But I couldn't, I don't know. This category was really hard because yeah, we've read a lot of good books this year. Mm-hmm so many good books okay our next one is best romance book of the year contemporary romance yeah sorry contemporary romance i'll go first a part of your world by abby jimenez thank you i'll go second (laughs) (laughs) yours truly abby jimenez up top yeah (laughs) if there's anyone that loves abby jimenez more (laughs) then 
Is that because I was married? I don't know. <laughs> she has a dog. These two. I know she does have a dog. She has a dog because her dog sent me a TikTok. So of her there's dog. anyone who loves Abby Jimenez more than her dog, it is Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I read three. No, I just read part of your world. I loved it. I loved it. Um, I just haven't read as many. What did you rate it? I don't know if I saw. I think it. I rated it four. Mm-hmm. Same. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, I think my favorite was Happy Place by Emily Henry. Valid. It's didn't have one of my it had one of my least favorite book tropes in it, but I still managed to give it five stars. I think that might be my only contemporary romance that I read in twenty twenty three that I gave five stars. So I actually didn't give any. Interesting. You didn't? Mm -mm. It's just not your genre. It's not like your favorite thing. Well, I really like it, but my five stars are reserved for fantasy. I get it. That's fair. It's just more to fantasy. Yeah. You know, there's more to love. Yeah. I need to read more Abby Jimenez and another Emily Henry to see, like, compare. But I, so far, I definitely like Emily Henry more. But, Yeah both great authors they're They're wonderful love them great picks great picks everyone congrats okay (laughs) here we go hey do you think one day we'll be like reese witherspoon and get a little seal on a book that says irwsr approved i would die that would be my dream actually (laughs) i would cry i would cry too we're gonna we'll shoot for the stars we will it's a little hard let's just get us (laughs) like reggie michaela and kennedy (laughs) you know we'll put that on our vision board (laughs) We should do a vision board. We should actually be so cute. Okay. Best fantasy of 2023. <sighs> Michaela. I keep picking you to go first. I know. <laughs> You're going first. Why don't you go first? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go <laughs> I, first? I went first last round. You did? For romance. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'll go first. Okay. You know, <laughs> I could say like six books. I really could. Pick one. But I am going to pick one, and it's just for the reasons I've previously <laughs> stated. I I just have to give it to Court of Mist and Fury. I just, I feel like it's just the time I read that book and having it introduce me. I mean, obviously I read Akatar first, but A Court of Mist and Fury is like a million times better than Akatar. So I just introduced, I just have a special place in my heart for that book because that's what really was like, oh, I am a fantasy girly now. I am like no other genre will compare so i would agree with that that is my favorite of the year i would agree with that i look back very fondly of my time reading akatar it feels like so nostalgic to me even though it was like 10 Mm. 11 months ago (laughs) it feels like forever ago um but i'm not choosing akamoth as my favorite I love Akamoth with all my heart and soul. I know what you're going to say. I think you guys are going to have the <laughs> same answer. Mine's Kingdom of Ash. Darn it, you took mine. Mine is... Wait, were you going to continue? <laughs> <laughs> is yours Kingdom of Ash? I was or you think something else? I, I, I'm going to say the entire series. That, that's what I have on my notes. Don't look glass. I that's what say, I have to. I do think... Never mind. I was going to say, you should really, we should only really be picking one book for each of these awards that hey, we give out. I did choose one, Kingdom of Ash. If I had to choose Kingdom a book, of Ash, if yeah. I had to choose a book, it's going to be Kingdom of Ash. It's just like a culmination of everything for eight books. And I, I genuinely don't, when I first finished it, I kind of wished like, never mind. That's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I caught myself. There were maybe a few things that I wish would have changed, but I look back now and I just think, wow i just haven't felt that way reading a book in a really long time i think maybe with a certain book coming out in 2024 i might have that feeling again we'll see but i just love it ditto i just can't read that next year because i don't think anything's gonna top it so next year i won't read throne of glass (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so then right. it won't be on there yeah it won't be on the list yeah. it's gonna be really fun to compare i mean a year from now like our picks from this year to like our picks for next, next year, year. maybe i'll flip a switch and become a non-fiction reader 
I highly mm, doubt that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Favorite thriller of 2023. You guys ready? One, one two, two, three. three. Only, only one, one left. left. Riley Sager. I read a lot of thrillers. I just think I read a lot of fluffy thrillers. Yeah. And not ones that like were really like. Yeah. Um, okay. That book I read in like mostly one sitting so it was just really fun to talk about and discuss um and so that's why i think i liked it so much because by the end of it i was like oh my gosh i can't wait to talk to them Mm -hmm. about this book um and it was also like one of the ones that i didn't entirely guess everything Mm -hmm. but it still all made sense Mm -hmm. i mean that talk about plot twist you didn't see coming (laughs) That one was like plot twist after plot twist after plot, plot twist. twist. Yeah, the last 50 pages gave me whiplash. <laughs> Call my <laughs> chiropractor. <movie>. Whiplash. <laughs> yeah, I really liked I really liked that book a lot. I just I find myself always being disappointed by thrillers because I just expect them to blow my mind. And a lot of the times they don't, but that one pretty good. It did. Yeah. It did. Riley Sager did good. Sorry, did good. we all have the same one. It's fine. It tells you it was a winner. Okay, this one it's kind of lame nobody said this p.s you didn't submit this i submitted this <laughs> okay <laughs> this is kind of a lame category but i decided it might be kind of fun shortest book oh shortest book we've read yeah shortest book um mine's probably uh the last book of the mind Def series because i read that well the last book the very beginning mm-hmm. of 2023 i think that's probably my short oh yep no yeah sorry <laughs> i'm so confused <laughs> i was like is someone coming through the window you <laughs> scared me reggie <laughs> oh my god so coming. <laughs> <I'm so funny. laughs> my face probably looked like total <laughs> terror i was like what's going on if you're <laughs> listening please go watch the youtube of ethical <laughs> because both me and michaela were like <laughs> sorry i was i was <laughs> <laughs> oh okay i was just really like <laughs> think looking past you like in thought i thought someone was coming i thought something was happening look with out the dogs yeah same oh <laughs> what were we talking about? shortest book michaela what was yours oh mine was a novella um uh what was it? who is it by Oh, Ali Hazelwood. She has like these four novellas that are, you can buy them in one book. Um, it's 127 pages. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Stuck With You. It's not amazing, but it was cute for 127 pages. So can't beat it. Mine was a Shatter Me novella. Um, it was Fracture Me. It Ew. was 70 pages. Blech. If you're going to read the Shatter Me series, do yourself a favor and skip every novella but the last one the novella the last novella is worth it you're welcome (laughs) all right our last category is going to be our favorite episode of the podcast that we recorded this year reggie do you have yours i think i do okay you go first and um i think it would have to be bang mary kill (laughs) (laughs) classic it was like one of our first episodes we recorded which i'm just gonna just gonna say this real quick okay we are very much aware that our first couple episodes, our audio was not nearly as good as it is now. It was the poo-poo. So I'm just going to ask as a late Christmas gift, um, I, I would just like to kindly ask that if any of you f- are impressed with our audio quality now, <laughs> leave us a review. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Anyways, we're aware that the quality was not up to everyone's standard at the beginning and we hope that we have done our very best to fix that so if you maybe haven't listened to bang mary kill i'm just giving you a fair warning the audio might not be i thought it sounded okay but i know it sounds a lot better now like our current episodes but um that one was just really fun to record we need to do another one we do yeah there are a lot of giggles we'd love it the laughs okay michaela 
Mine was smash or pass. Another fun one. Another fun one. That's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> Mine was dedicated. Oh. Where we read the dedications. It was just so sweet. That was a sweet one. We cried. We, we cry. We laugh. We like the unhinged episodes. They're a little bit more fun to record. But if you guys have any episode recommendations or things you want to see from us in 2024 please send us a dm we love your guys's recommendations sometimes we we don't it's not that we run out of ideas but sometimes we're like how do we keep things fresh and fun so if you have any ideas let us know um i think that's it for the episode right any other categories you yeah. guys want to go over no I feel like that's pretty good 2023 was a heck of a year for reading it was so much fun i can't wait to see what we read next year and by the time this comes out it will already be 2024 right yeah happy new well, year everyone happy new year happy thanks new for year. supporting our podcast yeah we are absolutely it's crazy to us how much we've grown in the last like nine months not as much as reggie's baby but we have grown <laughs> 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 and we just want to thank you guys so much we didn't we never would have expected this book podcast to be what it is or even our tiktok so if you support us anywhere instagram tiktok youtube know that we love you and we're really excited for this year this next year we love you i think that's it love you guys bye bye, bye.